Someday from his birth, I'll pass away, but my soul shall reach a better land. Welcome to Stand Up Ministry, a bold Bible-based ministry with a mission to encourage the body of Christ to stand up for righteousness in spite of the persecution. And now, here are our hosts. All right, all Amen. right. Welcome Amen. to the ministry. This is your bold Bible-based ministry. We greet Amen. you today in, a, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Oh, yeah. Amen. We have a full house. Uh, we have our brother, um, Kirk Michelson, in route. He just called. He'll be here shortly, but we do have a full house nonetheless. And we thank God for another Thursday that we're able to come here live yes. and um, proclaim what does said the Lord. And not what thus says stand up ministry, but Amen. only the authority, final authority word of God Amen. is what we rely on. So uh, we want to first uh, let you know we have a wonderful show in store for you. And we talk about the impending wrath of God. We've been talking about that. Um, this is the second week. Uh, we want to continue on that subject. But first of all, uh, we have a couple of emails. That, uh, well, actually, the same person emailed us several times. Uh, and we want to probably share with you the email. Uh, just to, I guess, to respond um, to the email on air. And we do welcome all emails. Uh, we welcome all callers, whether they pro or con. Amen. Uh, we don't care what they are because, like Minister Robinson always said, Scripture interpreted Scripture. So Amen. Uh, it, it, it's God's Word, you know, uh, the infallible Word of God, which will stand. So it's not our opinion. It's all about the Word of God. You know, so we're going to talk about that as well. So anyway, while I find one of the Scriptures... Um, I mean, that one is which was one of the emails. Mm -hmm. I believe, I believe this is the first one. I, yep, I believe this is the first one he sent to us. Yes, and it says uh, the email came in after last week's show. Uh, now, in fact, it didn't come in after last week's show. It came in. Somebody got the newspaper. He made the newspaper and, and responded to the newspaper. So, what even the radio show? Mm -hmm. He should be listening. If the brother's listening, we welcome him to call. Call in later brother. on. Yeah, amen. Yeah, it says, ladies and gents, I picked up your newspaper today, and I was shocked. You guys sound like rappers who can't get a deal and are, <laughs> and, are upset. <laughs> and are upset with those who have been successful. Hide behind the word all you want. It sounds like you allow a root of bitterness to take root in your heart, and it's strangling the life, the life out of you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obvious you are angry, and that's because you have been hurt. I was hurt by church organization early in my walk with Christ. And and I'm going to come back and comment on it. My wife was telling me something after I read that. She told me something. I, I meant to respond to the brother on that subject. Alone. I'm going to come back to that. It says, consider how it looks from the world's point of view, the church fighting against each other. Meanwhile, souls are being lost. People are faced with real life situation, housing, literacy, divorce, abuse, and, um, and yes, financial challenges. And they are looking for real solutions to their problems. Take a tip from Jada Kiss. Whoever that might wow. be, a rapper wow. from uh, wow. Wow. Okay. Yonkers or something like so, that. So the brother wow. definitely, you know, take a take a tip from from Jada Kiss. Uh -huh. You know, uh, why why are you mad at the South at the South for? Switch your style up and go Southport. This sounds like a, a worldly thing, regardless. Gary, mm -hmm. this says, P.S. Um, secretly in your hearts, you wish their success was yours. P.S.S. It says, the world has been using the word for years to build successful corporations, and the church doesn't want to use the key that God gave to unleash the power of the kingdom within us. Uh, I just, uh, there were several comments, but I'm not going to address the comments, because we had a lot of comments. We're going to address that on the air. But uh, first of all, to Brother um, Derek. Oxley. Yeah, Brother, uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say brother. I meant to say Mr. Uh, Derek Oxley, uh, because brothers uh, are associated with those who are like-minded, like faith. So he is somebody, brother, but right now we don't know if he's our brother, and not to be facetious in what we say, but we don't know. We don't know. Uh, so, so Mr. Um, Derek o Oxley, um, we do uh, welcome your call. I'm going to give you the number here. There you we said, go. You said yeah. you, got, you got the phone, yeah. uh, you got the paper, but the number's in the paper. I'm going to give it to you anyway. If you're listening, brother, I mean, Mr. Oxley, uh, give us a call here in the studio. Uh, we will discuss that live on the air. 
uh, Eric, and we have five brothers in here who are uh, more than equipped. The Bible says, study that, to show yourself approved. Amen. Work really not to be ashamed, but rightfully able to divide the word of truth. So it's not just the word that we talk about, but it's the word of truth that we need to divide. Uh, they can come to you with, uh, and I believe we're going to have a caller calling from New York, I mean from North Carolina today, um, Brother Sean Scott. Amen. Uh, he's going to call in about 10 after. And, um, and we're going to uh, discuss that. I, I, I want to touch on something, some very key points that he made, one particular referring to Mr. J.D. Kiss about, um, you know, how we should handle it, we should turn around, you know, and go south or change up whatever mm-hmm. the, the, the comment was referring to. Right, right. See, that's one of the problems that we come against. Mm-hmm. Christians or so-called professed Christians look into the world as a standard for the come church, on, the body on. of Christ. Mm-hmm. The world's not to take the pace of what we do in the body of Christ. It's the scripture that should do it. Come and on. also another right. point as far as a deal is concerned or being a hater or jealous, I got the best deal that is in the world. Amen. Lakers Amen. can't provide us. The Knicks can't provide us. The Mets, the, anybody, they can't provide us. Right. This, this deal is a promise that if I live holy, it's eternal life. That's it. You can't purchase That's that it. in currency. Yes, you can't yes, purchase sir. that with stocks and bonds. It's paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. I got the best deal. They ought to be jealous of me. Amen. 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 I, I, I do want to get a mm-hmm. number. I, mm-hmm. I, feel that I want to get a number. Out sure. To mm-hmm. Mr. Oxley, if, you, mm-hmm. if you're listening. Amen. Uh, I don't know if you want to call in or you just want to listen, but I know you, you, your comment was that you're going to listen to our radio show. Uh, the number here is area code 201-298-9935. Again, area code 201-298-9935. I know Linda's laughing. So I mean, my wife's saying he talks so fast. I can, I can read face you expressions, you know. <laughs> I, I talk fast when I get excited. Amen. Like Mr. Robinson, he Amen. goes, he's all speaking, we get excited. We all, Amen. We all do. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. I just like to point out, too, first of all, um, I really and sincerely want to thank the brother. Amen. Amen. Taking the time Amen. Amen. to share his thoughts with him. Amen. Them. Because, um, you know, in radio advertising, an uh, email or a call, you know, represents a uh, number of, uh, of listeners. Wow. And so it's a good possibility and maybe even a probability that there are others that who feel, feel the same way. Same way. Amen. So we Amen. welcome, Amen. being that this is live radio, uh, you know, we definitely welcome the, uh, the call, the comment, the suggestion. But it's interesting, you know, Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. speaks. Amen. Uh-huh. And when you take this back to the time of Jesus when he was dealing with the Pharisees, and I think the email mentioned, you know, how the world might look at, you know, the, the church is battling back and forth. Mm-hmm. Well, two things that come to mind. Uh, when Jesus was asked about whose authority is he preaching, then he asked a question about John the Baptist. Uh, the emailer, he mentioned, he quoted, he had to, why didn't, if we're going to be talking about scriptural things, let's keep scripture with scripture. Uh, why would he have to go to a rapper and quote a rapper Amen. when we quote in scripture? Amen. And what did he have? What is his uh, specific uh, uh, issue with, with standard ministry? He mentioned some, some, some generalities. But again, we, we talk in specifics. We don't talk in riddles. We, and we and the main thing, you know, I want to just you know state the record. We back up everything we say with scripture. With scripture. We're not quoting men. Amen. We're not men quoting men. Amen. We're men quoting the word of the infallible. The infallible word. Word of God. And I think that's important if we're going to dialogue, and this goes for, you know, anyone that would like to email or call us, um, you know, we almost have to insist, you know, with this show that you come with a scripture with reference. Words. Exactly. <laughs> because uh, the uh, the impact and the influence is too uh, severe for us to be taking a chance on being wrong and being in error Amen. by quoting another man. Let's stick with the scripture and let the scripture be the final uh, doctrine that we use to go by. Amen. Amen. You know, and as I'm sitting here looking at, uh, you know, his second letter or email here, one of the things that stood out, he said, he said, the church fighting against each other while souls are dying. And, and you know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of truth to that, I guess, in his mindset. But we're not fighting against the church. We're fighting Amen. against error. We're talking about things that are being done yes. in places that call themselves the house of God, where people are being led astray by false teaching. Fighting you know, for said, the church. That's right. That's why he says here, you will attract people who are like, like you that are limited in their thinking. Well, that may be true. Yes, we are limited because the, the way is very narrow. Amen. And you should be limited. Jesus said, strive, agonize to enter into the narrow gate, for few there be that will find a narrow way. And so this way is extremely narrow. He goes on to say, continue to approach people with an antiquated <laughs> message, and it will not work. So he's saying that our mess, the message that we have is old. Well, I, I think the gospel is an old gospel message. Right. You know, time. It should transcend yeah. time, time, culture, amen, amen. amen. amen and yes. race. Amen. And he says, what is your objective? Is it to, w- to win souls or to expose mess? I say it's to do both. You win souls by exposing mess. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 It's, it's true amen. Expo- exposing <laughs> that which is false and, and that which is error and that which is leading people astray. Because after all, Christ says we are transformed 
by the changing of our minds. Right. As our minds, as our thinking is transformed, we can prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. How else do you do it except by receiving the truth of God's word, which comes through either proclamation, reading, or studying of the scriptures? Amen? Amen. 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 I would like to share a scripture, too, um, a couple, but I'll go with the first one, Second Timothy, coming from the book of uh, Second Timothy, chapter 2. Uh, beginning at verse 23, just uh, about two or three verses. And it speaks about Paul is uh, the backdrop is Paul is kind of getting giving some instructions to Timothy, a young minister, and some of the issues that are going on in the church uh, at the time with uh, infighting, some little civil, you know, uh, rivalry going on. Yes. And so Paul says, uh, you know, concerning uh, arguments and stuff like that, he says, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because, you know, they produce quarrels mm. and the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Uh -huh. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Mm. And what I want to just underscore that with is that we have we hold no animosity against anyone that happens to disagree with us because we want to uh, you know examine ourselves as well. And we're not perfect. But the word of God is infallible. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we also want to uh, point out that we are we are we are sincerely desire a dialogue, you know, with this brother. Amen. Uh, and anyone on else. Air, live. Anyone on air, live. On air or off air. Or off air. You know, maybe we'll go the extra nine yards, you know, even off the air to dialogue uh -huh. with him, to win him over to Christ. Because I, I consider, like what Paul said, he became yes. all things to all, to all men. men that all he men. might win some. Amen. This the value when we're talking about tying it in with the impending wrath of God. This is so important now of what's going on in God's house that if we don't take the time to get us get fortified within, Amen. then we're going to be of no value outside. Amen. So you may look at it like in Jesus's time, you could have said, wow, you know, someone may have uh, been standing on the outskirts and said they're fighting. But the fight was a necessary fight. Jesus said uh, in Matthew, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom yes. of heaven suffered violence, yes. and the violence yes. taken yes. by force. Uh -huh. there's, a fo there's a fight going on. We, we need to not act like now all of a sudden that we're not in a fight. We're in a fight, and as we get closer to the last day, the fight is going to get, the vit is going to get turned up. Amen. It's going to become more of a fight, and it's going to become more of a battle and an a, a, a option, not an option, but more of an obligation for us to take our stand, if our stands to get even stronger and stronger because of the doctrine of wind that's going to blow in now in these last days. Amen. Well, you know, also I think that uh, uh, this brother and also people who may think like him are a bit unaware of church history. Yes. Now, I don't know that I would want to put us in the same category, but, you know, in church history you had men like Martin Luther, like John Calvin, mm -hmm. like John Knox, mm -hmm. who stood up to a corrupt church system, That's right. Right. that if they had not stood up in their day and declared Preach, that brother. salvation was by faith alone, Preach, brother. we Preach, would brother. still be in the corrupt, That's the right. church would still right. be Amen. in the corrupt condition it was in. And to see the benefit, it, see, the thing about that too, Reverend, I want you to go ahead and pick that up, but the bondage, what that had, what that... The, the impact was the mm. bondage that the masses were in because yes. of this doctor. You had a few people corrupting yes. the masses. That's uh -huh. right. But then you had some of these single individuals that for their generation, when the Lord says, who will go and who will stand Amen. against uh -huh. these evil doers, Amen. who right. said they will, and we are the beneficiaries of that. That's Just right. like with Christ standing up, it took one to die for all. Yes. And in the same vein, you know, yeah. they suffered for us. So how dare us not stand up with the mediums and the access that we have now today and the knowledge we have. Amen. They knew in part. We know a little bit more in full. full. And when he of comes, we shall know in all. Amen. So how much more so to whom much is given, much, much is required. required. Amen. 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 So you get ready to preach there, brother. I know. <laughs> we better turn it up. <laughs> we, we, we want to invite uh, Brother Sean Scott uh, on the air. Brother Sean, you, you, you there, brother? Yes, I'm here. Amen. Amen. God brother. bless you. Amen. God bless you, God man. Bless you, all too. you heard the dialogue so far, I guess, right? Yes, sir. I'm just sitting here listening, just it, shaking my head. Amen. In fact, uh, you yeah. shared that you had a testimony because you were in the Word Faith Church for yeah. for a minute, yeah. and they talked about um, certain scriptures. They just quoted half the scriptures, misrepresented them out of context, talking about yeah. um, we should be rich because Jesus died, that we may be rich, something like that you were, right. you were sharing. Uh, right. Go ahead. Give us your testimony, brother. Um, can I real quick? I'm just going to read a quick scripture. Sure. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In um, order. First Timothy chapter 6, um, mm -hmm. verse 3, it says, If any man... Uh, mm -hmm. teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine, uh, which is according to godliness, uh, he is proud. Uh -huh. um, and mm -hmm. then it goes on, and it talks about those that uh, believe that gain is godliness. That's right. Um, 
And the Bible has said, uh, it says, from such withdraw thyself. That's uh-huh. verse 5. Mm. Okay. But what, 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 what I wanted to tap on was that, yes, I came out of the Word faith. I was in that, uh, uh, that type of teaching for 10 years. Mm. So I was one that ran, jumped, spent the round, and took every dime I had in the house and laid it at the uh, preacher's foot, mm. and, uh, and my breakthrough never came. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and be honest. Be real. Uh, the bottom line is this. Um, when I got saved, like I was telling Brother Tim earlier today, I knew that I was saved. There was an inward witness. I knew I was genuinely saved. I heard the gospel, and I yes. recognized that I was a sinner who needed repentance. Uh-huh. Um, and the moment I had gotten saved at that point in time, I just stepped into that uh, life more abundantly. Wow. Okay, because now I have the promise of eternal life. Amen. You know, so the bottom line is, you know, I had sent the email, and basically what I was saying to, uh, and I, Brother Tim, I think you, you got that email. Um, you know, for someone to say that uh, the abundant life or life more abundantly means wealth and riches, you know, then what about the poor Christians in Africa? Uh-huh. You know, yes. those who yes. are saved, Amen. China. They, are, are, they, are they not living an abundant life? Amen. You, you see what I'm saying? And yeah. that, gospel, that gospel had me uh, running after money. It had me set my affections on things of this earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had me, I quit a, a full-time job with benefits and, and, and you know, I really hurt my family mm. wow. because I was chasing after money. So that type of gospel, it just appeals to the flesh. Yes. And what it does is it causes uh, individuals to run out and chase money. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. Basically, that's, that's what happened to me. And I, I think it may be important, too, just for clarity, if we maybe uh, point out a dialogue, what that abundant life means. Yeah. You know, because see, that abundant life, that whole uh, that tactic only works for yeah. those that don't have. Yeah, that's because right. I know people that have money and, and are miserable. Uh-huh. That's you know, right. So what, you know, so Amen. How, do you appeal, how do you appeal to them when they have and still talk about that abundance means uh, materialistic or financial uh, right. you know, ad, you know, uh, advancement? That's right. How do, you that's reach, right. how do you reach if the gospel is mm-hmm. about wealth? Mm-hmm. Financial wealth. Mm-hmm. How do you reach Donald Trump with the gospel? Exactly, Bill Gates. I mean, Bill Gates. Right. It's a yeah. effect. Yeah. You know, how do you reach yeah. the ones who are right now that they're they're miserable in the midst of all their money? And yeah. I'm not against money. It takes money to be on radio. Amen. But uh, you know, again, the gospel is not about wealth, fi- uh, financial wealth, and uh, and and that's all we're continually saying. It's just interesting how this guy responds. He says, "What is your purpose? Mm-hmm. What market are you trying to reach? What's your approach?" What will distinguish you from everyone else? Why should, why should we listen to you? Well, I mean, you should listen because what we're saying is the truth of the gospel. That's right. And, uh, and if you go back to what, what you said, my brother, brother Carson, about the, um, that text in Timothy where, where it talks about them um, recovering themselves from the snare of the devil, the, right before that it says they will come to the, that they will come to their senses, mm-hmm. before it says be, that God would grant them repentance, that they would come to their senses, uh-huh. which yeah. means there are people who are, who are blind, blind by the God of this world, blind by their, their lack of understanding of the scripture, who cannot embrace the truth because they can't see it. They can't hear it. You, the clock, you're right. The clock is ticking. You know, it goes right into what we're talking about, the impending wrath. And, and when was the last time, I, I throw this out to all of you gentlemen, you know, because we all get to listen to people on radio and from time to time watch uh, what's on television with the television evangelists, all the popular programs. Every now and then I flip to see what's going on. Me too, out of curiosity. Time, but think about it. When was the last time you saw one of these health and wealth and prosperity preachers preach on the wrath of God? I, 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 I've never heard it. I could say almost never because it's not I've profitable. Never, I've never heard it. You know, <laughs> it, they mind earthly things, so their their God is their belly. They main That's concerns right. about is getting money, point yeah. blank, right. and they point will blank. lie and deceive yeah. whoever they will to mm-hmm. get the money. That's right. Amen. And since we quote rappers, when we'll, uh, go to MC Hammer, <laughs> yeah, they won't touch this. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. They won't touch it at all. That's, That's right. true. That's true. But you know what? It's very easy to again, and we've said this over and over again. When you get into the wrath of God. And, you know, my brother, you mentioned about coming to repentance, and, and we talked about this text, how Paul talked about the servant of the Lord must not strive, but must be able to teach those that oppose themselves that God would grant them repentance. Well, why would you want to repent and turn from your sin, right, if everything you hear is about come to God and everything is going to be great? That's There's right. no need to turn from sin. Why well, turn from sin? That's what repentance is all about. What's happening these days now is that, that the uh, these churches are preaching such a, a man-centered, self-centered gospel uh-huh. right. just right. to draw people seeker to sensitive. the church, being right. seeker-friendly uh-huh. and not there speaking about the wrath of God, which is more important. You, and and I've, I've said this to several people before, that how can someone, if you're in that type of an environment, um, and you come to faith in Christ, you know, would there be uh, the possibility that Jesus would say to that person, depart from me, I never knew you, 
mm. because you didn't know what you were coming to Christ for. Amen. The, the, the minister has left out that fact that the reason why Jesus died for you was because of your sin. Uh-huh. That's right. And it wasn't so that, uh, you know, so that the priest, uh, or the pastor, rather, I'm sorry, could, could preach a message that was just going to be comfortable for you because Jesus' death wasn't comfortable. That's right. Oh, Amen. It That's was, right. He was crucified. Amen. He was brutally Please. crucified and beaten for our sins so that we might inherit that, that forgiveness, to inherit that eternal life in heaven that, that is more important than just filling seats in a, in a, in a church. And, I, and, and not I, only that, but his preaching wasn't comfortable. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. And, and, and what he, he preached against were the, were the religious leaders of his day. Amen. The That's hypocrites right. who, Amen. Were, who were sitting in positions of authority and influence right. in what was at that time the, mm, church, the church. And he preached against them. And actually, that's why they crucified him. Amen. Because his message was not a message of comfort. It was. That's right. As the disciples were following him, if you look back in John chapter 6 and verse uh, 66, uh, his disciples had, had heard him say how hard it was what he was preaching. That's right. And, and what he was saying to them. Uh-huh. And many people had left. And then Jesus had turned to them and said, do you want to go away also? That's right. Amen. But the disciples knew that they couldn't leave because Peter had said, Lord, you to whom to... shall we go? That's you have right. the words of eternal life. And that's how you identify the true Christian. Amen. See, the yes. true Christian, you know, the preacher today, probably many popular preachers today, when, when you turn, when that crowd began to draw back, would have turned to the, the apostles and say, hey, don't leave me, please hang out. Don't just stay with the church. Don't stay here. Right. Jesus didn't have that attitude. He said, you know, uh, okay, see you later. Huh, you want it or not. Because, see, the, the message is extreme. We explain it all the time on the radio. The gospel was extreme. He said he'd come to set variants. Now, if he's going to buy houses, right. mother and, 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 and daughter, father and son, that tell you how extreme the message is. And what we come to do, which is by authority of God and through Scripture, to mark them, to name them, to come out against the apostate church. Because, see, many of the times... These churches are not really true. They're in the skies. They're under the cloak. They're really whorehouses. Yeah, that's that's right. For shock, it's whorehouses. Because any time you seek another faith other than Jesus Christ, Ouch. you're whoring the other gods. So it's a whorehouse in that actually. You know? Let, let, me, let me ask Brother Sean. You still there, Brother Sean? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask you something. You said something key earlier. I don't, I don't know if you said it just a minute ago. I, I didn't have my earphones on. But you mentioned about um, the, the gain is godliness um, uh-huh. theory. That they, Suppose. They, 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 well, supposedly uh-huh. these false prophets are preaching. You said something about what happened to the brother in Nigeria who doesn't have anything to eat. Uh-huh. Zambia. Know, they don't have gain. So uh-huh. what do you compare now when you're going to, to China and, and they're suffering? What do you compare now? What do you tell these people that, you, that you're not, you know. Uh, so and grow? Uh, yeah, the prosperity Aim message. Aim it, claim it. Yeah, the, the prosperity message doesn't reach, is it not appealing to them who are in South Africa or suffering, you know, for, yeah, for Christ right. in these, these foreign lands? It's that's not right. appealing. Amen. It's only appearing in America because. Amen. We have what you call that America dream. dream amen. So, so uh, what happened right. to the to, to the brother who's in these, these small third world countries? Uh, can you preach the same gospel? Amen. The gospel that we right. preach can transcend any country because it ain't about what you have, but it's about who you have in amen. the inside. Amen. amen. That amen. gospel can amen. be reached to even those in, in a third world country. Amen. amen. If you look at it yeah. too, when Jesus said you judge a tree by the fruit that it bears, see those same third world countries. That's if you want to look at a very distinctive difference, without all the materialistic things that we have, they are still willing to put their life on the line to Amen. preach this there gospel go. and Amen. to die for it. Die for so it. How, soldiers. Do, how do you explain that? How do you explain them willing to risk life and limb uh, for something that they cannot touch right now in, in, this, in, this, in this carnal world? You can't explain that except you understand and identify that there's something on the inside working on the outside, and greater is that within them uh-huh. than that's with, uh, without them, and that is why they have the presence of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and that is the abundant life, that, uh, that unspeakable joy, that peace uh-huh. that passes all understanding, and that is the answer to the riddle. Amen. And how do you explain that in some of these third world world countries where they're dealing with such harsh situations that they are praying for the church in the United States because they know how corrupt it is. Amen. And they are actually sending missionaries to America. Could you believe that? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Once again, 201-298-9935. We're taking all callers. 201-298-9935. Amen. You know, the lines are open. We want to take your calls. Some of you have questions, comments. You may disagree with what we're doing here at Stand Up. 
And if you do agree, we want to hear from you. The number again is 201-298-9935. And also, we're going to be taking your call. We're going up the air in about a couple of seconds. We're going up the air. But we'll be still here to 7 o'clock. So we're taking your calls up to 7 o'clock. Call us and, and, and chime in on this conversation. We wanted to talk, discuss the pending wrath of God, but we are unable to do, do so because we want to address the email that we received. So the phones are lighting up right now. 201 area code, 298 9935. We want to hear from you. Teaching to the Christian community. Thank you for being a listener and supporter. For further information, go to StandUpMinistry.com or call 516 564 0058. Again, that's 516 564 0058. Stand Up Ministry every Thursday at 6 p.m. right here on WWDJ 970. Caller, you on the air? Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi. Okay. Is uh, this uh, Dolores Dotson? Our broadcast has been sponsored by Stand Up Ministry on the Wellness Magazine. Jody Baker, I'm inviting you to check out our website at www.dj.com for special events and daily programming. As it all evolves with Christ's love and by His grace, you can also find a list of my sponsors. All that at www.dj.com. And all of this right here at WWDJ 970, New York's inspiring talk. God richly bless you. Harlem Christian Center, where the pastor is Emmanuel Westbrook, invites you to come and see why we are praise in the earth. Harlem Christian Center worships each Sunday at the Mid-Manhattan Adult Learning Center, located at 205 West 119th Street, between Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard and St. Nicholas Avenue. Sunday services begin at 10.30 a.m. Bible study is held each Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. at our 2143 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard location at 127th Street. Also at this location, we meet for our Friday evening prayer and youth services which begin at 6 p.m. Saturday morning prayer is at 8 a.m. Be sure to listen to the Living Waters Radio Broadcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 12.30 a.m. The entire month of June is Evangelism Month at HCC. Stop by and see why people are coming to where living waters flow. See you there. This is Sidney Henry from Food for the Poor. Food for the Poor is the third largest international charity in the U.S. We are a life-saving ministry that has been serving the poorest of the poor in the Caribbean and Latin America since 1982. Over the last 24 years, and with the help of listeners just like you, Food for the Poor has built over 33,000 housing units for families in desperate need of adequate shelter. Food for the Poor is a Christ-centered ministry that is committed to partnering with local churches in the countries we serve. We work alongside local pastors as we replace thousands of rusting, rotting shanties with safe and sturdy new homes. Only with your support can Food for the Poor give the local pastor an opportunity to make the love of God a very practical experience in the lives of the poor. At Food for the Poor, we are committed to helping the poorest of the poor see the gospel at work. Give by calling 800-882-9935 or visit www.dj.com. Want to get Dad something for Father's Day that needs no batteries and won't go out of fashion like a lobster bib necktie? Send Dad a message of love for free from CrossCards.com. If you love gospel, praise, contemporary Christian music, we've got it all. Kick it off around 4.40 in the morning for just about an hour. Great music with my co-host, Liz Black. I'm Kevin Cottrell. Join us. It's called The Wake Up Call. Check it out weekday mornings, Monday through Friday, right here on WWDJ 970. New York's inspiring talk and great music. Kevin Cottrell inviting you to join the birthday club. We announce your birthday right here on the radio and then send you a birthday gift. And here's how you do it. A postcard with your name, address, and birth date to the birthday club. 777 Terrace Avenue, Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, 07604. You can even email it to birthdayclub at www.dj.com. Listen weekday mornings at 830 for me to announce it right here on WWDJ 970, New York's inspiring talk.